G'day GDL peoples. In the last video I showed you how to put holes in your prisms. In this video we'll finish off that object by creating a 2D script, preview picture and some final parameter limitations. <coughs> Following on from the video I did how to put holes in this prism. Let's have a quick look at what this bad boy is. Keep in mind that we can change the number of holes in the X and the Y axes. It's fully parametric. All right. Currently I have no limitations on my A and B sizes or my XX Y, Z, X size. So I can break the object by putting in invalid dimensions. See, I can break it. So we want to prevent that. We will put in some limitations using our values statement. So what do we want it to be? We just want A to be greater than zero, don't we? We want to have the same for the B and the Z, Z, Y, Z, X as well. So let's just check that. There we go, greater than zero. Right, so now I can't break this object. I can make it very skinny. <laughs> but I can't break it. Look at that. So that means that my limitations on my edge margin is also working. That's great. Let's just reset this to default. I also want to create a 2D script. So at the moment, We've just got our project2 command turned on. And if you remember, project2 will just take our 3D prism and project what we ask it to. So I'm asking for a top view. That's what's appearing in 2D. There's no masking fill on that. So if I draw a line, move it to the bottom of the display order, I can see right through it. So there's no control over the line weights or anything like that. So for the 2D script, we'll create a submenu. I'll create a submenu for this building material. Move that into there. Indent it so now it belongs to this title and create some 2D parameters. That'll be a pen. That'll be a fill. So we'll save that, check to make sure our menus are working. There they are. Excellent. Jolly good. Now we create our 2D script. So the two statements that you use are your pen and your fill statement. The GS stands for Graphisoft and use consistently named parameters wherever possible, even Graphisoft parameters, because that way it's so much easier to copy from script to script to script. Once you've created your object properly, you can then just copy these parameters and have them work in your script without having to change them all the time. So now to get our 2D script working from our 3D script, we just copy our 3D into our 2D. But first of all, we got to move variables that we've used just in our 3D script. We've got to move them into the master script so that they are available to both the 2D and the 3D script. So master script, copy in my starter code. So my scripts all look familiar to me and they help my thinking and my 3D script. So these three here where we calculate our edge margin or sorry, swap out our variable edge margin for our parameter value and we calculate our whole length and our whole width. They all need to go in here into the master script. So I can now use them in my 2D script as well. Take all these, put them in my 2D script. And we will use a poly2 underscore statement instead of the prism command here. So let's have a look at that. Poly2 underscore. The reason we use a poly2 underscore and not a poly2, similar to the prism versus the prism underscore, is that poly2 doesn't allow you to have status codes, so you can't have a hole in your prism, whereas a poly2 does. So what is the syntax for that? 
poly 2. We've then got n, which will be nsp divided by 3. We don't have a height for the poly 2, but we do have a frame fill. In the frame fill, we want to draw the contour, which is a 1. We want to draw the fill, which is a 2. And we want to close an open polygon, which is a 4. So j1, which is a value of 1. j2, which is a value of 2. j3, which is a value of 4. That's what we want. These won't be 15s because it's 2D, not 3D. So these will be a value of 1. So status value J1, next segment is visible. So that's what we do. And the rest stays the same. Let's check our script. Have a look at our 2D, 2D view. And we can see straight away that we've got a background fill here. We notice, however, that our pen doesn't match what we've selected here. And the reason for that is I still have this project 2 statement turned on and I leave that on until I have the poly 2 or the 2D script worked out to make sure I've done it correctly. So you can see now that it matches, 3D matches the 2D. So we will comment that out. And there we go. Righto, so if I change that to a different pen, update. If I change this to a different fill type, let's call it you can see that it's changed in there, but you can see that the fill pen has no effect. Why is that? That is because we're using the poly2 underscore command. And it's a bit of a blunt instrument when it comes to controlling your pens. So you can just turn on your frame or you can turn it off, stuff like that. If you want to control fill pen and fill background pen, see I can't even control my background pen. Have a look at this, fill background pen, change that to a nothing. So what we need to use instead is a poly 2A or a poly 2B. I prefer to use poly 2B because you can see poly 2A will give you the control over the fill pen, but no control over the background pen. Whereas a poly 2B gives you control over the fill pen and the background pen. So we'll change our statement to a poly 2B, come back here, we'll go poly 2b and what do we need we need our n we need our frame fill we need our fill pen which is gs fill pen and our background pen and let's have a squiz there we go look at that we now have full control over our contour pen our fill pen or our fill type our fill pen and our background pen. There we go, look at that. Fantastic. I'll just set these to the defaults that I want in the object. Save my object and have a look in the plan. There we go. Look at that. It's got a background fill which is working correctly and it's derived from our 3D script. We just copied and pasted, changed what we needed. The last thing we do is create our preview picture. It doesn't have to be the last thing, but turns out that's what it is this time. So I'll just take a screenshot. Go to my preview picture, paste it in place. Keep in mind, the size of this picture will impact the disk size of your object. So if you copy it in a Mac, they have a tendency to be quite megabytes in size, which will bloat the size of your object. So keep this image small. It only needs to be 128 by 128 pixels. And there's my preview picture here. I'll save. And there's my preview picture. Now, the other thing to note is that I've got my five hotspots through here in my four corners and in the middle. Those are automatically created by ARCHICAD. And in this instance, I'm happy to leave it like that because I've used the A, B, and Z, Z, Y, Z, X. ARCHICAD will automatically look after the hotspots for me. If I start adding my own hotspots, then those will disappear. So this is all I need for this object. So I'll call it quits there. Now we know through these two videos how to create holes in your prisms and how to create the 2D view from that 3D script.